Hello folks, hope you're well. In this special Q&A video, we're going to hopefully answer some of the questions that we've had in the comments of our biggest video to date, the Wrap Snitch Knishes tutorial video. To be honest, I've been blown away by the success of this video and I want to help you guys a little further by clearing up some of the things that we see frequently in the comments. But before we do, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So let's get straight into it. The first question, what are the chords on the backing track? The chords for the backing track loop that I made are pretty straightforward. It goes G major seven, F sharp minor seven, B major, and then D major seven. And that's the chord structure for the bulk of the song. Every so often, you get an E major chucked in at the end of the sequence. So you change from the D major seven to the E major, and you do two beats on each of those chords. That change happens a couple of times in the song. Obviously, if you just play into the loop, you can listen to it, or you could listen to the song, figure out where those changes happen, and play accordingly. Here's the way I played and voiced those chords in the video. So you've got G major seven, I do this monster of a chord. And then the thumb over the top on the E string. So you've got low E string, third fret, muting the A string with the thumb, as if I'm not asking you to do enough already. Then you go D string, fifth fret, G string, fourth fret, B string, third fret, and E string, second fret, and it sounds like this. So that's the first chord. There's plenty of other ways you could play a G major seven, and of course that'd do. Then you've got an F sharp minor seven, bar in the second fret, and fourth fret on the A string. And then you've got a B major, which is just a straight up bar chord, E shaped bar chord at the seventh fret. And then you've got a D major seven, which I do like that. That's borrowing the G, B, and the E string at the second fret. So it sounds like this. And then the E chord, you just stick on the end. Pretty sure I just did a normal E chord, cowboy chord. And that change goes like this. So there you go. Next question, how do I get that guitar tone? As is so often the case with great guitar sounds, it's always more simple than you'd imagine it being. I'm happy to do a full video on my rig at some point, but the basic answer I give to this question is as follows. I used a clean Fender amp, the Fender Blues Junior, a tiny bit of overdrive from a pedal, in this case the Crowther Hotcake, some analog delay, and a Hall style reverb to taste. I added a bit of compression to the whole lot in Logic when I mix the sound, but that is basically it. Any delay and reverb, if they're used correctly, will be fine in this context as they're not a major component of the sound. The most significant component of this guitar sound, in my opinion, is the guitar. Which brings us neatly onto our next question. What guitar am I using in that video? <laughs> the guitar in the Rap Snitch Knishes video is this one and it is a Fender Made in Mexico Baja Telecaster, made in 2014, and it's custom shop designed. That's the thing about these guitars, is that they were designed by the custom shop. So it's a very nice guitar, and I actually got it second hand, and it plays great, and I use it all the time. Next question, what is the tuning for this song? Well, that's a very interesting question. Very interesting indeed. In my tutorial, I used standard tuning, E, A, D, G, B, E. So actually there's nothing interesting about that. But if you've learned the guitar part from my video and then attempted to play along with the actual song, you'll probably have noticed that something doesn't quite sound right. That's because the actual track is approximately 50 cents sharp. So if you're starting from standard tuning and you wanna play along with the song and for it not to sound like murder on your ears, you'll need to tune the whole guitar up 50 cents. Without getting into the weeds on this, you'll need to tune 
each string halfway up towards the next note. So for example, the E needs to be halfway between the E and the F. The A needs to be halfway between an A and a B flat. The D, halfway between a D and an E flat. The G, halfway between a G and an A flat. And so on. And so on. So that guitar is now 50 cents sharp all the way up ish you can do this by ear if you're able to or if you can get hold of a chromatic tuner some of them will allow you to see the detail needed to tune a certain amount of cent sharp or flat once you know how to do this you'll be surprised how many songs actually use this trick and it's quite cool to have a play with but it is a very subtle difference here is the guitar tuned 50 cent sharp and here it is back to normal. So as you can hear, it's a very subtle difference, but it will make playing along with the actual track much more enjoyable. Or you can stick with standard tuning and use my backing track, which brings us on to the next question. Can I have the backing track? Yes, you certainly can. Click the link to the Google Drive in the description and grab it for free. And what about the tabs to the guitar part? It's yes again. Hit the Google Drive link and enjoy my handwritten tab like it's 1998. And the last question, what is the BPM that we used for the backing track? It is 82 beats per minute. <laughs> the track itself is at 95, but I slowed it down for the purposes of teaching it and also because it's really hard to play at that speed. So there you go. Hopefully that clears a few things up. We really appreciate everyone who watches our videos and we are trying to be more regular with the content. So please stick with us. Give us a like if this video was useful to you and please consider subscribing if you haven't already. See you on the next one.